coffee, George. Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. You know, Maxwell House is always good to the last <laughs> drop. And that drop's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, transcribed in Hollywood and starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With our special guest, Eddie Cantor, yours truly, Toby Reed, B. Benadera, Joan Banks, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and Bill Goodwin. For America's Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for America's everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. <laughs> Well, in the process of spring house cleaning, Gracie ran across George's old vaudeville trunk filled with newspaper clippings and other mementos of those never-to-be-forgotten days. Gracie dusted off the trunk, called George, and the two of them are now reminiscing. Listen to this, George. Let me read what it says about you here. What does it say? Uh, George Byrne... Vaudeville's finest singer, most graceful dancer, and funniest comedian is now appearing in this city. Where'd you read that? It's printed on the outside of your trunk. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, in those days, I handled my own publicity. Now, you... I, I, uh, I couldn't afford Maggie Ettinger. Yeah. Uh, well, you were wonderful. Thanks. I remember when you played in San Francisco. My mother took me to see you. That's when I first fell in love with you. You did? Mm-hmm. I'll never forget the thrilling moment when that tall, handsome man walked out on the stage <laughs> and introduced you. <laughs> yeah, Benny Fields was a good-looking MC. Yes, uh, and, and then, then you made your entrance, and I said, Mother, there's the man I'm going to marry. Hmm. Something went boom in my head, and it spun around. Really? Yeah, my mother hit me with her purse. <laughs> she never cared for me. Did oh, she? but nothing could stop me. I followed you clear across the country. Yeah, every performance, you'd be sitting in the front row. I got so, I sang right to you. The audience must have known we were in love. What makes you think so? Well, the minute you started to sing, they'd walk out and leave us alone. <laughs> Sometimes. Yes, sometimes. <laughs> You've kind of got that on the downbeat, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I pestered you until you finally let me team up with you. You said if I made good, you'd pay me $25 a week. Yeah, that was 17 years ago. Gee, I hope I make good someday. <laughs> Don't give up, kid. You're coming along fast. Well, we better get back to work now. Oh, no, no, George. Let's look through this trunk. It brings back such wonderful memories of our courtship and marriage. You love this old beat-up relic, don't you? Oh, sure. I wouldn't trade you for Boyer. <laughs> I meant the trunk. Oh, That's oh, That's what yes. I meant, yes. Uh, how did you get it so banged up, George? Dragging it down hotel fire escapes. Ah, uh, come on. You were always modest. I guess you were afraid if you went through the lobby, they'd recognize you and ask you for your autograph. Especially at the cashier's window. <laughs> Let's go through some of these old pictures, George. Who are the people in these pictures? Different vaudeville acts. There's a picture of Eddie Cantor. This was taken while Eddie was playing Buffalo. Gee, his makeup was perfect. He looks just like a buffalo. <laughs> Buffalo, New York. That's a city near Albany. Oh. Hmm. Eddie was the star comedian of the whole circuit. I was playing straight. Is that near Albany, too? <laughs> yes, straight New York. That's across the Hudson River from Enman, New Jersey. Ah, uh, George, now you're kidding me. I am. Sure, the Hudson's a car, not a river. <laughs> I should have known I couldn't fool you. Yeah. Well, let's get back to Eddie Cannon. He was a big star, wasn't he? One of the biggest, Gracie. And just the... He started out pressing pants on the east side. Uh, didn't he press the other side, too? <laughs> Only if you were an ex 
the closing act. We made our first radio appearance on Eddie's program. Oh, sure, I remember that. We really owe Eddie a lot for, for giving us our start in radio. He was the top star of the country. Oh, he sure was. What is he doing now? <laughs> Eddie Gandler? Yeah. Are you kidding? He's got a hundred irons in the fire. Oh, went back to pressing pants, huh? <laughs> Eddie Cantor does radio, television, pictures, stage appearances, club dates, benefits, luncheons. In fact, he does too much. If he doesn't slow down, he'll ruin his health. Well, George, here's our chance to repay Eddie for giving us our start in radio. Let's help him slow down. I'd love to, but how do we do it? Well, you take over some of his work. You can do everything he does, make speeches, tell jokes, and you can sing rings around him. Mm-mm. <laughs> If you know Susie like I know Susie, oh, what a girl. Oh, darling, hold back a little. Don't think so good. You, you just want to slow Canada down, not bring him to a dead stop. Now, uh, come on, let's go talk to Eddie. George and Gracie, how wonderful to see you. Well, it's nice to see you too, Ida. Is Eddie here? Who? Eddie. Who's Eddie? Your husband. Oh, oh, the little man who rushes in now and then for a clean shirt. I see him so seldom, I've almost forgotten him. Well, George said he was very busy these days. Oh, it's terrible, Gracie. He's gone all the time. I've reached the point where I'm not sure that I'm married. Well, with your family, you'd better be. <laughs> yes, look, Ida, you mean that you, you, you never see him anymore? Yesterday, I saw him for a bare five minutes. Oh, peeped at him in the tub, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, between the bubbles. Eddie's always done a dozen things at once, but he should have some time for his wife. I haven't had a kiss from him since February. Of this year? Yes. Well, that's not so bad. Now, I haven't I've had been a... busy with the flyest frolic. <laughs> uh, if Eddie doesn't slow down, he'll kill himself. He just never stops. Oh, Ida, surely you're exaggerating. No man could possibly be... Well, that... goodbye. I'm off. Oh, my mistake. I just came in. Eddie! And Gracie, what are you doing here? We came over to talk. Well, it's been a nice visit. Where's my secretary, Miss Titus? Right behind you, Mr. Cantor. Did my agent line up my personal appearance schedule for next week? Yes, sir. Starting Monday, you play San Francisco, Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, Cheyenne, and Salt Lake City. So much for Monday. Now, what about Tuesday? <laughs> Eddie, could I have a kiss? My agent will take care of it. All right. <laughs> Eddie, a kiss. Oh, a kiss, sure. Mm. Hey, hey, not me. <laughs> George and Gracie, what are you doing here? We came over to... Well, drop it again. Miss Titus, what is this? What is my schedule for the rest of today? Three benefits, two luncheon speeches, retakes at RKO, two radio shows, and a television program. <laughs> this guy must think he's a horse. Oh, and you're laying a cornerstone. He must think he's a chicken, too. <laughs> he must relax sometime. Oh, Miss Titus, you forgot I'm going to the wrestling matches tonight. Aha. Uh -huh. I'm refereeing the main event. Pays $50. Eddie, look, you've George got... George and Gracie, what are you doing here? <laughs> We're playing badminton. Oh, don't be such a stranger. Take another letter, Miss Titus. But really, Eddie, I don't know why you bothered to come home at all. Because I'm a devoted husband, a family man. I wanted to have lunch with my wife. Oh, wonderful. What would you like? Two three-minute eggs, and i got to have them in 30 seconds. <laughs> but that's impossible. All right, bring two raw eggs. Yes, Eddie. And eat them yourself. I'm too busy. Miss Titus, Miss Titus, what am I doing tomorrow? Eddie. George and Gracie. What are you doing? <laughs> this has gone far enough. Eddie, do you want to kill yourself? How much does it pay? <laughs> I mean, you're working too hard. Now relax and listen to me. I haven't got time. Come on, Miss Titus. Time to get back to the office. Oh, Eddie, Eddie, aren't you going to give me a goodbye kiss? Kiss, oh, sure. Mm, goodbye. Oh. Well, he must like you, George. That's the second time he kissed you. <laughs> I'm his favorite. Let's go home, Grace. <laughs>
wonderful. That's the name of the song, folks. And it's wonderful how much real enjoyment there is in a steaming cup of truly good, truly satisfying coffee. Delicious Maxwell House coffee. It's America's favorite, you know, bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. And the reason for this great preference? Well, it's flavor, of course. That good-to-the-last-drop flavor of Maxwell House. There's only one way to create that famous flavor. It's the blending of many choice coffees. Premium varieties of highland-grown Latin American coffees, which our Maxwell House experts select with infinite care and skill. Now, first, they choose Manizales for Melonis. They add Medellins for richness. Other choice coffees contribute robust vigor. And finally, they round out the blend by adding Bucaramangas for fine, full body. This perfectly balanced blend is then radiant roasted to flavor perfection and brought to you vacuum-packed in the familiar blue Maxwell House tin. And ladies, vacuum packing means you get all the flavor and goodness you pay for. It means that every pound of Maxwell House coffee you buy is just as fresh and full-flavored as the hour it was roasted. So friends, why deny yourselves the best in coffee-drinking pleasure? Tomorrow, enjoy Maxwell House, always good to the last drop. George, we've got to think of some way to help Ida Cantor keep Eddie at home. If we don't, he'll ruin his health and his marriage. You're right, Gracie. What would you do if I were Eddie Cantor? Oh, I'd go home to my mother. <laughs> Maybe Ida can try that. Well, I don't think she knows my mother. <laughs> Say, George, I know what'll keep Eddie at home. What? Jealousy. Jealousy? Well, sure. He'd stay home if he thought some handsome, attractive man were interested in Ida. Some man like you. Oh, go. Well, he would. You're the most attractive man in Hollywood. Ooh. Whoa. Back up a little. Well, you're just as attractive as Eddie Cantor. Now go forward a little. <laughs> well, George, I know what I'll do. I'll just pretend that there's a man who's crazy about Ida. It'll be easy to trick Eddie. You think so, huh? Mm -hmm. Don't forget, he's been married 35 years. Oh, well, that makes it easier. He's been broken in. <laughs> See you later, dear. Goodbye, dear. Now then, Gracie, what's on your mind? Oh, it's nothing important, Daddy. I, I just wanted to ask you, uh, uh, where you cut those beautiful flowers you've been sending Ida? Flowers? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, Eddie, that card in them was so sweet. Uh, to Ida from her lover boy. Oh. oh, you rascal, you. Did you like that? I thought mm. it. Wait a minute. <laughs> I haven't sent Ida any flowers. <laughs> Well, uh, uh, pretend I didn't say anything. Goodbye, Eddie. Hold it. Hold it, Gracie. Who could have sent those flowers to Ida? Oh, Eddie, they must have been from you. You signed the card a dozen times. What? It had a whole row of X's on it. <laughs> Gracie, those were kisses. Well, whoever made them sure had funny-shaped lips. <laughs> uh, do you realize what this means? Some man is trying to take Ida away from me. You think so? Sure. How do you like that? Five daughters and he goes for Ida. <laughs> I know what I'll do, Gracie. I'll hire detectives to put a tail on Ida. Oh, Eddie, don't do that. Her clothes won't fit her. <laughs> Gracie. And, and people will be stepping on it all the time. Gracie, when you put a tail on somebody, they get followed. Well, I don't doubt it. <laughs> She'll stop traffic even on Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, forget it. 
Ida getting flowers from another man. How could she do this to me? Well, it's your own fault, Eddie. You've been neglecting Ida. I don't neglect her. Every week I send her a ticket to my radio program. <laughs> well, that's not enough. No? No, now that she's got a boyfriend, send her two tickets. <laughs> Gracie, this has all happened because I'm away too much. I'm going home right now and take Ida a box of candy. Or maybe a new watch. Or maybe even a mink coat. Or a new Cadillac. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll take her a box of candy. <laughs> See you later, Gracie. I just dropped by to tell you, Ida, that Gracie and I are still trying to think of some way to slow Eddie down. Oh, well, that, that's very sweet of you, George, but don't bother. Gracie had an idea that, uh, that jealousy might do it. I doubt it. Well, what would Eddie do if he came home and found a young, attractive man here? He'd adopt him. <laughs> I guess he would at that, yes. Uh... George, you don't have to worry about slowing him down. I just returned from the doctor, and he gave me this prescription. It's a sedative for Eddie. Uh, it'll make him relax, huh? Uh-huh. And then maybe he'll take me on a honeymoon. You've never had a honeymoon? Eddie was too busy. We were married backstage while he was master of ceremonies at the Capitol. I'm the only bride who ever got kissed by one of Fink's mules. <laughs> That second mule from the end always was very effective. Oh, we've just never been away. Why, Eddie hasn't even seen the places out here the tourists go to. Huntington Library, Forest Lawn, Palm Springs. That guy needs a sedative. I'll get this prescription filled for you. But will Eddie take it? Well, I'm supposed to slip it into his food. You see, the doctor says that by putting small amounts... <laughs> Gee, I hope Ida likes this candy I brought her. The first layer was delicious. <laughs> oh, there she is, waiting by the window for... And there's a man with her. No, it's not a man. It's George Burns. <laughs> Could he be the one who's chasing Ida? I'd better sneak in and listen. This is a great idea, Ida. Once Eddie takes this stuff, we won't have to worry about him anymore. What's this? Uh... Do you think you could give it to him without making him suspicious? Oh, it'll be easy, George. All I have to do is slip a little into his soup. Uh -huh. Poison. <laughs> She's going to give me poison. I'm too young to die. I've hardly been on television at all. <laughs> George, I don't like to do it either, but it's the only way to save our love. Oh, those Jersey people. <laughs> so they want to save the love, eh? Well, they'll do it over my dead body. What am I saying? <laughs> Are you nervous about it, Ida? Oh, yes, George. I'll be glad when it's over with. Then I can take Eddie to Palm Springs and Forest Lawn. <laughs> Wants to bury me with a suntan yet. <laughs> I've got to tell Gracie about this. Yes? Why, Eddie? You're pale and trembling. What's the matter? It's Ida. Oh, excuse me, Ida. You look just like Eddie. <laughs> I just made a terrible discovery. Ida's going to feed me cyanide soup. Oh, what's the matter? Don't you like those foreign dishes? Cyanide is poison. She's going to put poison in my soup. What for? For another man. Oh, can't the man do it himself? You don't understand. It's the man you told me about. He and Ida are in love, and they want to get rid of me. Oh, you mean there really is a man after Ida? Yes. And his initials are G.B. Jack Benny. <laughs> no, no, Gracie, it's George Burns George Burns Well, now, that's a funny coincidence I've got a husband by that name <laughs> That's the man 
I heard George and Ida plotting to get rid of me so they could run away together. George and Ida? Oh, I can't believe it. I can't either. It's ridiculous. You and I are the ones who earned the living. What are those two going to do? Cook for each other? <laughs> Gracie. Well, Eddie Canner, hello. Hello, hello Bill. <laughs> well, what are you two so low about? You got problems? Yes, Bill. George has left me and I'm worried. Well, stop worrying. Maybe he won't come back. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's your problem, Eddie? Ida wants me to get rid of me. I'm not good enough for her anymore. Not good enough? Why, Eddie, you're the answer to a woman's prayer. You've got everything. Charm, talent, a, a handsome face, a fine figure, youth, sex appeal. You really think so, Bill? Well, no, but you were living there for a minute. <laughs> I'd like to give him some bite of soup. Well, I'm only kidding, Gracie. Look, I I've got a terrific problem, too. Now, let's solve them all at once. Gracie, have you got some Maxwell House coffee on the stove? Well, I always keep them hot, Bill. Well, bring it in, and we'll sit down and thrash out all our problems over a cup of rich, delicious, mellow Maxwell House. All right, I'll get it right away. Fine, Gracie. All right, Eddie, now tell me your whole problem right from the beginning. Well... You see, Bill, I'm never home, and Ida... And believe me, your problem won't seem nearly so big, Eddie, after you've had a sip of that refreshing Maxwell House coffee. Go ahead, Eddie. Well, you see, I'm never home. There's something about the flavorsome goodness of Maxwell House that just seems to make troubles vanish. Go on, Eddie. Well, I'm never home. That's what I'm... Why, Maxwell House is America's favorite brand of coffee. Keep going, Eddie. Well, I'm... Good to the last... <laughs> well, let's hear your problem, Eddie. Well, I'm never... Ah, oh, well, you see, I'm never home, and I... It's a blend of... Yeah. <laughs> of choice Latin American coffees, you know. Radiant roasted to the very peak of flavor perfection. Bill, are you through talking about Maxwell House coffee? Yes, Eddie. Are you sure? All through. Well, my problem is that I'm never home, and well, I don't think... the Maxwell House coffee, boys. <laughs> oh, oh. Ah, let me add it. Mm. Ah, that was wonderful. Well, goodbye. Wait a minute. You haven't solved any of our problems. Well, I solved mine. What was it? I was dying for a cup of Maxwell House coffee. <laughs> I'll see you later, folks. You've got to help me. Ida's going to kill me. Uh, kill you? What for? What does she hope to get out of it? She'll get George. Well, that'll teach her crime doesn't pay. <laughs> well, Bill, George happens to be very desirable. With his looks and personality, any woman would be crazy to take him. She certainly would. <laughs> now, listen, Gracie, I don't believe this whole story. Well, maybe there is some mistake, Eddie. Let's go to your house and see if Ida and George are still there. Yeah. Shh. I hear them talking in the kitchen, Gracie. Let's listen at the door. How's the soup coming along, Ida? Oh, just fine, George. Uh, thanks for getting that stuff from the drugstore. How much was it? Oh, forget it. It's on me. I'm sorry we didn't do this to Eddie years ago. <laughs> See, Gracie? Well, you're right, Eddie. They're going to kill you. What shall I do? Well, you better have your tuxedo cleaned. <laughs> the guy in the drugstore says that this stuff has no taste at all. Eddie will never know he's getting it. Oh, what a honeymoon we'll have. They're already planning their honeymoon, those two. <laughs> this time, I won't have to be kissed by one of Fink's mules. <laughs> Did you hear? Did you hear what she called me? Yeah, and I think it's cruel. You didn't ask to be born with those ears. <laughs> <laughs> this is going far enough. Come on, Gracie, let's face them. Okay. Eddie, Gracie. Ida, George. Gracie, Eddie. Herman, Sam. <laughs> 
Herman? Sam? Well, I was getting tired of the same old name. Oh. Well, you two murderers, we caught you red-handed. What? Oh, Ida, how could you do this to me? What about our children? Man, George, how could you do this to me? What about our children? We haven't got any. I know. What about that? <laughs> Will somebody please explain what's going on? Oh, don't act so innocent, George Burns, sugar throat. We heard you plotting to put that stuff in my soup. Well, certainly. We're worried about your health. Afraid it'll last, huh? <laughs> Ida means you've been overdoing yourself, Eddie. You don't know when to stop. You think you're a regular oak tree. So does Ida. She can't wait to plant me. <laughs> Shame on you, Ida. Putting this poison in my soup. Eddie, Eddie, this is a sedative. I got it from the doctor to relax you. Sure, you're working too hard. We're trying to save you from a nervous breakdown. I want you to stay home with me. Oh, God. And I thought you two were in love. Oh, how could I be so dumb? Well, they fooled me too, Eddie. You're just as smart as I am. <laughs> how could I be so dumb? Ida, I've learned my lesson, honey. From now on, I'm going to stay home with you. Give me that soup so I can relax. And don't worry about your public. George will entertain them. Show them, sugar throat. If you know Susie like I know Susie, oh, 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 what a girl. He's going to do this to my public. I can give George the soup. Tell Miss Titus to OK Cleveland, Detroit, and Cincinnati. I'm going back to work. If you know Susie... Be sure to listen to Eddie Cantor's Pabst Blue Ribbon Show over the same network every Friday night. George and Gracie will return in just a moment. Join us again next Thursday when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Bill Goodwin, Harry Lubin and the Maxwell House Orchestra, and yours truly, Toby Reed. And now, here are our stars. Well, congratulate me, George. I've just been elected president. President? Yes, national president of the Don't Be a Gracie Club. A Don't Be a Gracie Club sounds like a sensible idea, but... What is it? Well, it's a cub, uh, club composed of housewives who have pledged to contribute to safety in the home by checking their own homes for things that cause accidents. That's, that's wonderful, Grace. See, home accidents kill 30,000 people every year and injure more than 4 million others. Uh, how many clubs are there? Well, tonight in 35 cities, charters are being presented to the first chapters of the club. And I hope there'll be hundred more. If you'd like to form a chapter of the Don't Be a Gracie Club in your community, please write to Gracie Allen at the Hollywood Plaza Hotel, Hollywood 28, California, and she'll send you full information. Good night, everybody. If you like good things the easy way, good things the easy way, instant Maxwell House, that's for you. Good, good coffee that's easy to No time, no trouble No grounds, no pot And it's good to the very last You, you know, know what? Yes, instant Maxwell House means great coffee instantly in your cup Here's real instant coffee All pure Maxwell House coffee in instant form Enjoy instant Maxwell House Instantly Good to the very last You know what? Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. What's in a word? Let genial Haven McQuarrie tell you. Stay tuned for Noah Webster Says, next on NBC.